leader. I am standing in the room of one of our senior adult ladies' classes. And I'm going to tell you why in just a few minutes. Remember, we are continuing in our series entitled Broken Vessels, How God Uses Imperfect People. This week, we're in session four. The title of the lesson is called A Channel of Comfort. It's out of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. And the point of the lesson is that I can be a channel of God's comfort to others. So this is a bad news, good news lesson. Here's the bad news. We live in a fallen, broken, sinful world. We live in a world that everybody experiences pain. It doesn't matter if you're a godly person. It doesn't matter if you're the worst of the pagans. Good things happen to you and bad things happen to you. In fact, that was one of the things that Solomon struggled with as he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. You know, it rains on the just and the unjust. So what's the point of it all? Here's the thing. Pain, suffering, just doesn't happen for the bad people. And it just doesn't happen for the godly people. But in fact, for Christians, we should expect more, not necessarily uh, pain and discomfort, but persecution. And we looked a little bit about that last week, about God's grace being sufficient for us in those times of persecution. Because in fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Paul tells Timothy that in fact, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So we probably as Christians won't experience more sorrow and death and uh, relationship problems and financial problems as, as non-believers, but we will probably suffer more persecution. But that's the bad news. Okay, here's the good news. When we experience those times, we have comfort. We have a comforter. We're not in it alone. In verse 3, we see as Paul begins his letter, as he usually does with grace and peace to you, but he also says there in verse 3 about God being the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort. And that's where we're going with in the lesson, is that God is the source of all comfort that, comes, that can come our way. And in verse 4, Paul mentions that God comforts us in our affliction through Christ. And who is the person of comfort? Who is who is called our comforter, our paraclete, our uh, advocate? Well, we see over in uh, John 14, 16 that that, of course, is the Holy Spirit. So you got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit all working together to bring us comfort. We are not without hope or comfort if we allow God to, to do that in our lives because we, we've heard the saying that when those problems come into our life and they, they sometimes can make a wedge between us and God, we, it either makes us bitter or better. And so we've got to be very careful that we allow God to comfort us during those times so we don't become bitter. If we look just at us in our situation, it's easy to become bitter. But you know, I liken this comfort that comes from God through Christ and the person of the Holy Spirit. I, I liken that to spiritual gifts. And you're saying, how do you liken that to spiritual gifts? Well, you know, a spiritual gift is given to an individual, but it's not just given for them to use for themselves, right? A spiritual gift is used for the betterment of the body. And I believe the same thing is true with comfort here, as we see in our passage here in 2 Corinthians 1, that as God comforts us, that, in turn, allows us to comfort others. So when that Christian friend comforts you in your time of sorrow or your time of affliction, that's God working through that person. And that person is being God's hands and feet, allowing him to comfort you. And then you can, in turn, do the same thing. You know, I would not go as far to say, as some people do, that God allows those terrible things in your lives so that you can, in turn, comfort others. But I will say that he will use those times in your life to be able to comfort other people and be able to minister to them. The reason I'm in this classroom, this is uh, the classroom where one of uh, my senior adult ladies teaches, and she came to us probably about uh, seven or eight years ago. Actually, she was raised in this church, but I had been out of this church at least for quite a while, and I had learned uh, through uh, one of our city officials that her grandson was killed in an automobile accident just a few days before graduation. And in fact, what really made this t 
terrible, uh, to make it even worse, was that this was a car that the Sunday school teacher and her husband purchased for the grandson for graduation. So there was a lot of uh, just emotion and suffering. And um, so a couple of us went over to visit with her. And in the midst of all this, um, she started coming back to, to our church and took a course in grief and now is leading that course on uh, coping with grief, coping in times of loss. So I would not say that God let that grandson die so that she could lead this course. I would say that the grandson passed away, and as a result, through the comfort of God's people being manifest and being uh, put into her life, that she allowed that comfort not just to... Uh, stay and comfort her, but then she allowed that to overflow so that she was able to comfort others in that same type of loss. So that's about all I've got for this week. It's um, To me, it's going to be a very short lesson, so we might have an extended prayer time. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you might look at some other verses can, uh, about comfort and uh, maybe bring those into play as well. So anyway, uh, we'll be in 2 Corinthians again next week. This will be our three weeks in a row we'll be in the book of 2 Corinthians. So don't forget to pray for your class, and don't forget to comfort your class members when they experience loss.